The race for 2024 is heating up. A brand new poll showing Donald Trump still dominating the GOP field as the top choice for nearly 60% of Republican voters. Fox News contributor and our friend, former GOP Congressman Jason Chaffetz, joins us now. So let's take a look at this poll. Welcome, Jason. Uh, let's take a look at this poll. What do you make of this? I mean, they keep, we've got four indictments and a mugshot, and the numbers keep growing. What does it tell you about the Republican voter? And what does it show you about what's going to happen in the general? I, I think the Democrats have way overstepped 91 indictments against the former president of the United States. I think most people see that as excessive, non, not necessary. Um, and it bolsters up Donald Trump. And it, it creates all kinds of problems for all the rest of the people in the field. They can't get the oxygen to actually go out there and make the case. And Donald Trump's numbers get stronger and stronger. But if you're one of those competitors, particularly Governor Ron DeSantis, I think you got to be able to say, hey, look, you can't win in the general election, Mr. President. That's his case to be made. And if you look at the state by state polls like Georgia and Iowa and Wisconsin, some key vital states, he's going to say, I do better than you do in a general election against Joe Biden. Now, whether or not ultimately every voter buys into that, but that's his story. So what is in the mindset? I mean, you you touch and talk to a lot of people out there yeah. and travel a lot. Um, you're a former congressman, of course. What is going on in the minds of if you're a Democrat trying to understand why would Republicans vote more for Donald Trump after an indictment and after a mugshot that I think they thought was going to be a fatal blow to Donald Trump's campaign. What's in the mindset of the Republican voter that they that, that more of them are flocking to Trump? Because they recognize that you have a Department of Justice that has been weaponized. It's an unequal application of justice. The way they treat Hunter Biden, the Bidens, Hillary Clinton, you name it, on the Democratic side of the aisle, they treat it so differently than they do Donald Trump, for goodness sake. I mean, it's it just case after case. So they've emboldened Donald Trump. They don't understand why, you know, don't even begin to understand what Republicans feel about just application of law, liberty, you know, right, so you think self determination. It's, it's the, the, and they like the way when Donald Trump was president, energy prices were low, the economy was good, the world was safer. They, people like that. And they, they didn't forget about it conveniently two and a half years after it happened. Do you think it is for many of those voters existential where they think if Donald Trump, if they could do this to him, they're coming after, that there's a two-tier yeah. system of justice, that, that I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I'm going to feel like a dissident in my own country, or I do feel like one. Yeah, they think they're coming after their, their liberty. They're, they're coming after their way of life. They're going after moms, for goodness sake. The Department of Justice targeting mothers and people that care about their kids at school. And, and the American people feel that. And what's also interesting about this poll, the poll over overwhelmingly said the majority of people don't want Joe Biden or Donald Trump to, to run. But they are the two that? leaders. I, I, I can't. I can't explain. <laughs> I mean, it's so interesting, it right? But it is interesting. I, I think on the case of Joe Biden, he is too old. His cognitive capabilities have diminished. And there's just a set of people that just will, will never he run, vote. Will he be the ultimate Oh, I don't think so. Who will I, that be? I, I, I don't know. But I think by the end of the calendar year, I've said for a long time, the end of the calendar year, I don't think Joe Biden's the president. He has, you know, he has less than 10 campaign staffers on Joe Biden for president. He's not exactly working hard, and he's not even going to the swing states that are really important. He took a trip out west. He came to Utah. We love having him in Utah, but you know what? He didn't go to Montana. He didn't go to Nevada. Yeah, he didn't that's go to so Colorado. And only 10 staffers. That does say a lot about. Yeah. You may be right. You may be right. I hope we so. may have a vice. We may have a president Kamala before no. the end of the term. No. I think no. I think you just broke some news on that. No, let's not do that. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. All right. So uh, we have Sunday morning futures you're hosting. You, it's always a great lineup on that show. So what do you have this weekend? Well, look, uh, I, I, duck and cover America. Congress goes back into session this mm -hmm. week. So we have Senator Marsha Blackburn. Uh, we got Mike Gallagher, who's the chairman of the uh, looking at China and everything that's going on in there. Claudia Tenney uh, that's coming on and the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Jason Smith, uh, Hunter Biden, the Biden investigations, what's going on with China and then the appropriations. How are we going to actually fund the government by, government by the end of the month? Big show. Love the guests. It's going to be good. And a great host. So make Thank sure you, you tune in right after the show. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Jason. Hey, it's Will Kane. 
click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Cain podcast for full episodes right now.